Hello there, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. Thank you all for being so patient with me, as the new job keeps me busy. Anyway, if you are new to the channel, please show that subscribe button some love and set the notification bell to all, as I do happen to upload. It was daily, and now it's down to three to four times a week. If you would like to learn how to become a member of the channel, that information can be found down below. Also, thank you to the ones that bought me coffees. I'm still accepting those, by the way. <laughs> I need all the energy I can get. And before I go further, please take a look at the screen and wish all of the September babies a happy birthday. From myself to you, I hope your special day is filled with fun, friends, laughter, and overall joy. Happy birthday. Speaking of birthdays, next up is October. So please head over to the community tab and list your October birthdays and of course read the directions and list what you can. If you happen to leave your birthday under a video in the comments, you will not be mentioned as I do not go back and search through video comments to try to find a birthday. You need to head over to the community tab where I can see it and keep it organized. Cool? All right. Without further ado, it is time to go back to ashes, for once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck it and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled Creepy Let's Not Meet Encounters. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I will read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. As a child, I traveled a lot with my mother to different tourist places in our country and abroad. We celebrated that New Year's Eve in Austria, and I was 12 years old at the time. That day, we were at the Constituents Museum, one of the most famous places in Vienna, especially for tourists like us. However, I remember that this rendezvous was very tiring for me. When we were at the very bottom of the museum, my mom said she wanted to go to the bathroom and asked me if I wanted to go to the store afterwards before leaving. I replied that I didn't and told her I would wait for her on the bench in front of the wardrobe until she did her business. She was absent for a few minutes when a very tall man with a creepy smile from one ear to the other and wide, wide open eyes approached me when I was sitting there. He started talking to me and I thought he asked me some questions, but... He was speaking German, and I did not understand what in the world he was saying to me. I replied to him that I don't know the language, which infuriated him. He touched my shoulder and changed his voice from affectionate to aggressive. His English was so-so, as was mine, but he tried to convince me that I do really speak English and that I tried to fool him. At this point, my mom came back and approached the man in surprise. He was clearly frightened, quickly waved at me, and fastly walked out of the museum. My mother asked what he wanted, but I did not know what to say to her, for I understood nothing of a speech except a complaint that I did not answer him in German. There was also an elderly couple who happened to overlook all the entire encounter. I approached them and asked them what the man was trying to tell me. The woman just replied something that it doesn't really matter, that the man was very strange and I should be really careful. Who knows what would have happened if my mom hadn't shown up on time. My sister and I went to the beach yesterday since it's still warm out in New York and we wanted to get some sun. Since it's after Labor Day and schools are back in session, there are no lifeguards there and it's pretty isolated. 
We arrived at around 11 a.m., and there was a couple sitting near us, as well as a man who was walking in the sand with his headphones in. At around 1 p.m., the couple who was sitting near us left the beach. The man who was walking in the sand was still there, and further in the distance were two women sitting in their beach chairs. My sister was sitting in her beach chair, and I decided to lay on my stomach to get the back of my body more tan. All of a sudden, I hear my sister say in a fearful voice to me, There's a man coming towards us. The man who was walking the beach with his headphones in came walking towards us, swinging his arms back and forth. I immediately got up, and he on the edge of my beach blanket. Both my sister and I panicked in the moment and basically froze. I asked him if he needed something, but he didn't say a thing. He just stared at my sister and me. My sister said, Let's grab our belongings and just go. He got off our beach blanket and exited the beach, but, but the whole encounter really had my sister and I shaken up. Who knows what he was going to do to us, or if he would be waiting for us in the parking lot. We immediately contacted the police and filed the report. Tonight I finished work and began my commute home on the train. I sat next to a lady minding my own business. There is two stops before my station, and it's a phone blackout area. As I was sat minding my own business, this guy walks down the train towards the front. I didn't notice as I was forward facing. Then the guy stops in the middle of the aisle, does a 180 turn, has this horrible smile on his face, and goes there you are. I've searched the train every night for you, my angel. Are you getting off at Triple X? That was my stop, mind you. Then proceeded to say and then getting on Triple X bus home, which is true. All whilst staring at me and smiling at me. He freaked the shit out of me. The lady next to me could tell I was scared. As soon as the train came into the station, I ran as fast as I could for the bus. It happened around six hours ago, and I can still see his face, and I feel sick and nervous. It's the fact he said, I've been looking for you, and knows my commute. Please bear in mind, I only saw him that once that I know of last Wednesday, and he was smiling at everyone, and I did that smile that you normally give to strangers. You know, the side smile. Calling me Angel and knowing my routine, I think he may have been following me for a whole lot longer. From age 13 until almost 15, I had a paper route. I delivered papers to people's doors six days a week. All of my customers, aside from occasional grumps and chatterboxes, were absolutely wonderful. Most of them were older, and so many of them were so happy to see me every day just to have someone to talk to. Many of them would love to leave me granola bars, water bottles, and even tips. Winter holidays were a great time because everyone would leave huge tips. It was a pretty good first official job. Eventually, some of the snowbirds moved back and became my customers. One couple, Louise and Gerald, will always stick out in my mind. They started off normal, pretty friendly people, but I noticed one Sunday, the only day I had to get up early to deliver papers, that Gerald was outside. He chatted me up, nothing unusual. Because it was so early and because I'd usually go right to bed after I was done, I was wearing a Britney Spears shirt and a pair of polar bear pajama pants. He complimented and said I was dressed cutely. I was confused because it was pajamas I just threw on randomly. 
I was confused by the compliment, but I just went on about my business and didn't think much of it. Something else to note, his wife Louise was always smiling. I couldn't pinpoint why, but it was always unnerving to me. In retrospect, it gives me the meek and mild and subservient, trade wipe vibes, maybe. Anyways, I had noticed that in their garden, there were three different dog headstones that all said flow on it. I was kind of confused as to why all had the same name, but I figured maybe multiple people had bought them and they wanted to be polite so they put them out anyways one day louise was out and she had a dog with her she introduced the dog to me as they had just adopted her and guess what they named her fido all the dogs they had were named fido and they were all shelties just like that one was I thought this was weird and I told my mom about it and she told me not to be so judgmental as it was probably one way they dealt with grief. Here's the thing though. They kept trying to get me to come inside. They invited me in for tea, which is not really something people do where I'm from. Coffee and donuts is a little more commonplace, but even that isn't something people do on a regular basis. Or they'd invite me to talk to them. I always declined because I had more papers to deliver and I wanted to go home. Gerald kept complimenting my outfits even when they were pajamas. One morning he did this while getting closer to me and eventually touching my shoulder and I eventually was like, uh, <laughs> I gotta go, and left. I didn't tell my mom about it at the time, as our relationship was good at that point, and I feared that telling her of any concerns that I had would make her not trust me or make her mad. This was also at the tail end of my CSA, which she doesn't know about to this day. I thought maybe I was just paranoid. Then... Right before I moved, and I gave her my paper route, a really bizarre incident happened. It was a Sunday, the last Sunday I had the paper route to be exact. So I was out early delivering papers, like it was so kind of dark out, and Gerald was outside. He complimented my outfit again, getting all creepy close. He invited me inside and said, I really don't think my mom would accept me being gone for longer than she expects me to. She's very strict. Which wasn't the whole truth, but you gotta do what you gotta do. He seemed to get kind of annoyed and just ask, Wouldn't your mom just prefer that you respect your elders and not turn down an invitation? I felt the color just drain from my face and I noped it out of there as quickly as I could. I muttered something about I had to hurry along because my dog was sick. I heard him say some compliments about how my hair looked pretty. I have very wavy and curly hair that gets very puffy and voluminous when I'm in the humidity, and he would bring it up a lot, saying that my hair reminded him of the 80s. I booked it as quickly as I could, to the next house without running. I didn't see Gerald after that, but I did see Louise, and she never stopped inviting me to come inside and play with Fido or have tea. I always declined. She seemed disappointed every time. So, that's my weird paper route story. Maybe I'm paranoid, but Gerald and Louise had some funky vibes. Gerald and Louise, let's not meet. This happened to me back in 2008 to the early 2010s when I was 11. 
I met a girl who was the same age as me since sixth grade. She and I weren't the same classmates until high school, but we were the same school. By the middle of sixth grade, things got really creepy. Somehow, she was everywhere every time I had an extra class, including every time I had to switch from another schedule to another schedule. My entire life, I never gave my private information to her, but I was half aware she knew by her own eyes, even though she was a nearsighted person. Unfortunately, I had reported it to the teacher and faculty members, but they brushed off my warning as a ruse because I didn't have enough evidence to prove it was her. What's worse, we weren't allowed to bright any electric devices, like phones, for example, for pieces of evidence against her except calculator for math and physics. This bothered me forever. She even shared the same home economics class and swimming lessons as mine during the eighth grade, but yet again, not the same group. Even in ninth grade, she still kept following me nonstop, despite I warned her to leave me alone. After I graduated at 15, I left for a high school to start over, even though I forgot about her until the middle of October 2012. She's back. My skin turned pale as well as my heart beat like I was in full-blown panic mode. This girl, how did she even know I'm in high school that I enrolled in, and more importantly, I again didn't link my information everywhere, not even her. Once again, she won't leave me alone, and she starts to get worse. She guilt-tripped me into befriending her to let her use my belongings, whether it was permission or not, despite her soft manner. It was a huge red flag to begin with, but I could have avoided it sooner. On the other time, she overheard me and my classmate conversing about mine wanting a key charm that my classmate had. But on the next day... She attacked me after I took a seat in the class because she knew that I wanted something that she didn't. This incident situation, by writing a statement report, I ended up having to rewrite it twice because of error in grammar. And by the third, the principal had made the decision. She was suspended for a week, but it wasn't enough. She returned after a week and accused me of her suspending, which I wasn't involved in with her drama, even though I didn't have another choice but to report my statement for my safety. And once again, she guilt-tripped me for other reasons by hypothetically calling me for being a terrible friend, even so far she destroyed one of my belongings and supplies. I called her out, but she pretended she didn't remember it. Worse, she framed a student for having torn a notebook that she destroyed, and she refused to admit her mistakes. This was my last straw, as it made my blood boil. But I didn't want to show my anger as she gave me a watch in exchange for money, which turns out she swindled and got away with. In all situations, half of my peers and teachers witnessed this incident and warned me that I should end my friendship with her. She wasn't my friend, just saw me as a pawn and manipulated me by taking advantage of my kindness and trust. We were still in the same in high school, but I quietly outright not to be close with her again. That's it until early December of 2012. That was the last time I ever saw her, and I guess that she was expelled after the last warning from one of my peers. I felt relieved, but I will never forget what she did to not only me, but to the other half of my peers as well. By near the end of high school, I realized that she was indeed not a very good friend, and her attitude was sociopathic, manipulative, liar and almost creepy and that was the reason why i ended things with her for good 
Luckily, I didn't give her the phone number or address since that wasn't allowed in the school, which I managed to avoid that red flag. It's been almost 16 years since this incident took place, after I finished my high school in 2015. I'm almost 27 and currently have a job. The experience made it difficult to truly trust anyone and befriend them ever again. So, to the girl I used to befriend, let's not meet ever, ever again. This happened over 10 years ago, so excuse me if the details are a little fuzzy. When I was in high school, my friend Claire came to sleep over. We made some plans to sneak out and hang out with some guys, and then one of them would drive us home. We'd go out to our friend's apartment, have some fun, and around midnight, we decide it's time for us to head back. But when we ask to be taken back, everyone says no, despite previously agreeing to take us back. Everyone said they were too drunk or too high, so we eventually decided to just start walking back, and we would make some phone calls to see if anyone could pick us up and bring us the rest of the way back. My house was a good 20 minutes away by car on the highway, so there was no way we were walking all the way back. The apartment was towards the back of the complex, so we start making our way back to the entrance. We don't even get halfway there before a car slowly starts rolling up behind us. I was 15 or 16 at the time and very naive to the ways of the world, so I wasn't too concerned, but Claire was a little smarter than me on this night. She tells me to start walking faster, so we started walking faster. The car also picks up their pace behind us. Again, she tells me to walk faster, so we start moving as fast as we can, and that's when the car pulled slightly in front of us, and two of the passenger doors opened and two men got out. Realizing there's no walking faster to get out of the situation, she instructs me to run now. So she takes off running and I follow her. She runs towards a group of parked cars and jumps behind a pickup truck. And for a minute, we hope and pray that we weren't spotted. This is where details get a little fuzzy. One of them must have gotten back into the car at some point, as there's only one of them following us behind the truck. We hear a set of footsteps quickly approaching and she quietly indicates that we're now going into stealth mode. This man is on the other side of the truck that we're hiding behind. He's circling the truck looking for us and we're slowly and quietly circling it on the opposite side to avoid being spotted. It felt like a scene from a movie or video game. We somehow managed to do two to three circles around the vehicle without being detected. And, by the grace of the gods, he gave up and decides to go back to his car with his friends. This is our one shot to get away. She tells me to run again. So we run for what felt like eternity, but in reality was probably only 15 to 20 seconds. We found the pool house area and find a spot to hide. We were hidden behind some fences and bushes and were anxiously awaiting to see if they discover us. Their car pulls around to the pool house and we're biting our nails, hoping they don't stop to get out. The car slowly drives away and we realize we haven't been spotted. We were safe for now but the car circled around the apartment complex for hours and hours and hours. They weren't giving up on looking for us. We were safe for the time being, but now we needed to find a way out of there. It was the middle of winter, and of course we were dressed to impress the guys we wanted to hang out with. So 
short shorts, and revealing tops. We were freezing. We found a dirty, disgusting Captain America blanket that we huddled together under while making phone calls to find someone to pick us up. We tried contacting the guys at the apartment, but no one answered our calls. None of our friends answered our calls. We felt completely alone and hopeless. But around 5 a.m., someone finally answered and said they would pick us up. The best news I had ever heard in my life. Our friend gets to the apartment complex but can't find the pool house. The group of men is still constantly circling around. So there's no way we're coming out of hiding. We managed to figure out where our friend is at with a little detective work. Figuring out what building they're facing, what's in front of them, or are there dumpsters nearby, etc., etc. We figure out where they were at, so we make a run for it. We spot their car and hop in as fast as we can. Go, 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 go! We tell them, and our friend speeds off towards the entrance. We passed the group of men on the way out, and that was the last we saw of them. We made it back at around 6 a.m., just in time to sneak back in without my parents ever knowing we had left. If Claire hadn't been with me that night, I definitely would have probably been abducted, raped, and possibly killed. So thankful for Claire and our friend that picked us up. But a big fuck you to the adult men we want to hang out with as teenagers and especially fuck you to the guys that intended to harm us. On a happier note, I'm now very diligent and aware of my surroundings. And we washed the dirty Captain America blanket and shared custody of it for years after this encounter. So to the men who terrorized me and my friend in a shitty apartment complex, fuck you. Hello everyone. A series of events unfolded in my life causing me to move out and live out of my car ever since a month ago. It's nothing new for me, however, as I've lived out of my car for five years, I would say and also in the past and have never had any encounters until yesterday that is something happened that shook me to the core there's this small beach on the coastline which has been my go-to sleeping spot on the southbound part of the road is a whole lineup of cars and rvs mainly other homeless but also people coming to hang out because it offers a nice view of the bay I usually sleep on this side. The people who come here like to bring their beers, play their music, and gather outside. But it's super chill and everyone keeps to themselves. Lately, I've been having trouble sleeping and tend to knock out at around 2 a.m.-ish, not waking up until noon. Problem is, on the southbound side... The sun will bear down at 8 a.m., turning my car into a sauna in the morning. About a hundred yards down on the northbound side, there's this tiny hiking trail in a vast lot just off the road, and there's a few trees there which offers me shade well until the afternoon. There's also a park across the street. It's a much more secluded area, but I've been sleeping there since the last week or so. No issues at all. Typically, only a couple of other cars around this area. Yesterday, I pulled up to my spot at around 12.30 a.m. and found this large 4x4 pickup parked right there. There's another car parked across the road and a third one on the other end of the lot as well. I think no biggie, there's a second tree just in front of the pickup, which works, so I'll just pull up there. But it's only a 20 feet distance between us, and I'm in their direct line of vision. I realize now, in hindsight, it was a stupid move, but oh well. 
There's two people in the front seat playing with their ranchera and mariachi music, and there's also a dog left outside on the leash, possibly others in the back seat, but I couldn't confirm due to the windows being tinted. I never make eye contact and keep my head down the entire time. I first go take a leak in the forest, come back to grab my pillows and blanket from the trunk, and hop into the back seat. I'd assumed that would throw them off, any paranoia they may have been having, as they'd see that I was just coming to sleep in for the night. Within five minutes, they take off and drive up the road for a short distance before suddenly making a U-turn and returning back into the lot. They do some weird random driving in front of me, then pulls back slowly and very close to my side. I roll down my window and the passenger has his window all the way down. He's asking me something in Spanish and his English is mm, no. He is clearly drunk, coked up, bloodshot eyes, pupils dilated and talking in a slight slur. He's also visibly angry and expressing intimidation via body language. I respond to him in English, so he asks if I'm policia, and I'm like, what the fuck? Nah, man, I'm just sleeping here, shows the pillow and blanket. But he keeps pressing me. No, no police come here. No, no police. I reply. No, man, police no come here. Never. Don't worry. I tuck my hand under my head as per the universal sign of sleeping, again reiterating that I'm just here to sleep. But he's getting frustrated and asks where I'm coming from. I'm trying my best to de-escalate the situation and talk calmly and nicely and even apologize if I happen to bother them. I ask directly, do you think I'm police? And he responds in the negative, shaking his head. I point up to the trees and explain, Shade, shade power morning, shade power of my car. Just so he knows why I decide to park in the spot. But he is pretending to not understand me and says, Policia, come here. Again, I tell him, no man, Policia, do not come here. I sleep here every night. It's okay. Dude is pissed through and through and starts halfway flashing something in his hand from behind the car door. It was a very subtle gesture. I cannot say for sure if it was a gun or not, but he was definitely suggesting something. He then says, after today, you no more sleeping here, repeating this twice. Then says, okay, 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 pulse pumping his chest in piercing gaze in a menacing fashion. The driver floors the gas pedal and takes off in a frenzy. As they're taking off, the passenger dude hangs out the window, looking back and mugging the living shit out of me before they get back on the road, hitting the accelerator at high speeds. I sat there for a good 10 minutes, just so I don't run into them a second time. Then, went to sleep near a Walmart instead. I didn't get their license plate, but since they likely also have my plate and know what I look like, it probably turned sour for me if I reported them anyway. I spent the whole day dwelling on what happened yesterday and have a little clue as to what made them trip out like that. My only plausible theory is that they didn't like the parking proximity to them and took it as a disrespect. Anywho, there goes a perfectly good parking spot. This happened about five years ago. I randomly just felt like I wanted to share this with someone. I also hope this can help other people in a similar situation. 
I had just gotten out of a two-year-long relationship. Living in the city, I moved in with my then-boyfriend for... After he left, I felt lonely and heartbroken. I was stuck in the apartment we had shared. I downloaded Tinder to chat to guys as a way of coping with the breakup. There. I matched with this guy. He was about four years older than me. He was extremely handsome and charming. He was very much into fitness and had an amazing body. After talking to him for a few days, he asked me to meet, so we did. He came over to my house, and I was immediately attracted to him. He was a bad boy, the kind I usually fall for. But he was also very sweet in the way he talked to me. He kept complimenting me and doing sweet stuff to me. After a few days of meeting, we ended up having sex, and it was honestly the best sex I have ever had. I felt this intense chemistry between us. We started hanging out and having sex a lot. At the time, I did smoke weed a lot. I know he smoked too and did some other drugs. I didn't really care much at the time. I mean, eventually. He would keep asking me to hang out pretty much every day, begging me to come over because he missed me. When I told him I was too tired, he would bribe me with stuff, like saying he would give me massages, weed, dinner, romantic things, give me the best night, etc., etc. He didn't like it when I told him no. He would sometimes get angry and send me a bunch of messages just pleading for me to come over. After every time I had been to his house, he would shower me with love via messages. He was so romantic, saying I made him feel so amazing. There was something special about me in that he loved being with me. He would often shower me with compliments, but then get angry when I said I didn't have the time to hang out with him. At some time, I was at his house. He got a phone call from someone after he hung up. He told me I had to go upstairs and hide because his baby mama was coming over. He didn't want her to see me because she was crazy. He told me some stories of crazy stuff she had apparently done, and being me, I believed him. He was very convincing. I believe this happened twice. Now, I know I should have seen the red flags. I probably did to some extent, but I didn't care much. I kept hanging out with him a lot, even though I figured out he was heavy on drugs like coke and speed. One day, I was at his house and we had sex. I had smoked a lot. He was on coke and probably some other stuff. He wanted to have sex again, but he got frustrated that he couldn't get it up. He got mad and kind of blamed it on me, not being firm enough on the grip. He kind of yelled at me to squeeze it harder, and he just kept getting more frustrated. I was really feeling uncomfortable and wanted to leave, but he wanted me to stay. He tried to continue, but it didn't work. I was extremely uncomfortable and felt embarrassed. After a while, I told him I wanted to leave. He then told me to give back the weed he had given me. As in his mind, it was his payment to me, belonging to him. I honestly felt so pissed that I just grabbed my stuff and walked out the door. And, of course, he followed me. At first, he walked calmly, about 30 meters behind me, begging me to stay with him, asking where I was going. I kept walking and saying no. He then ran towards me. I picked up my phone to call a friend of mine because I could tell he was getting aggressive. I turned around and saw him literally tear his shirt open and stomping towards me. He grabbed my phone right out of my hands, then kicked me in the stomach so hard that I fell into a ditch. He then smashed my phone to the ground and told me, You're done! I thought he was going to beat me up, but then it looked like he was actually trying to contain himself for a second. 
and just turned around and left. I was completely mortified by what he had just done. I ran away shaking. I can't even remember how I got home, but somehow I did. I was able to borrow a phone from someone and called my friend. He came over. I had bruises on my stomach, legs, and had no phone. I also called the police using a friend's phone and told them I wanted to press charges. A few days later, he messaged me saying I tried to steal from him, that I took advantage of him just to get some weed. A few hours later, he texted me saying, sorry. A few more hours, he texted asking, what had happened to me yesterday? Then, a week later, he found out I had reported him to the police. He was pissed. He said he couldn't believe that I had reported him. Then, he told me he would give me two new phones or whatever I wanted if I withdrew the report. That he wouldn't contact me anymore if I did just that. He just didn't want any trouble and didn't want to lose his daughter. I didn't answer him. Then he sent another message fabricating the entire story of what happened that night. He kept harassing me for weeks with messages. Some days he was begging us to get back together or be friends, bribing me. Other days he was accusing me of random stuff, calling me names, etc and that he had a great lawyer, that he could report me to the police for stuff I had never actually done. He kept acting like a smartass, saying he would beat me in court. It all just became a big, chaotic mess. After a few months, there was a trial. I couldn't attend physically, so I testified via a phone call. I was questioned about our relationship and the incident that night. He lied and made up stories about me, but no one believed him. As the trial went on, I received all the papers in the mail. I was in shock when I read it. He had previously been charged with violence and rape towards an ex. Apparently, there was also an incident where he had forced his ex-girlfriend to touch herself while multiple other men watched and videotaped her. There were other girls, too, that had experienced similar things. Stuff like robbery, weapons, fights, violence and torture, you name it. He had been to jail multiple times. I had no idea I had been dealing with such a dangerous man. I am pretty sure he is a psychopath. He has no understanding of what he has done. The sick part is... I recently came across a post about him on Facebook. Apparently, he is pretty popular with women lately on Snapchat and Instagram. He posts stuff about his life, whining about being beaten up by random men and being tortured and robbed, etc., etc. That people follow him with guns. I have learned that the reason he keeps being beaten up by people is because they know what he has done. He posted pictures of himself at the hospital to make people feel bad for him, and they do. He makes women feel sorry for him. He says people lie and make up stories about him, and he gains pity. He then posts all the sweet replies and messages girls send him, saying stuff like he feels so grateful for all the support. He is extremely good at manipulating people. I honestly feel so lucky that I got away at the time that I did, and that I didn't escalate it any further. I checked his Facebook, and apparently he had a girlfriend now. I pray he doesn't hurt her in any way that he hurt me or the other girls. Sorry if everything is not in order or something is missing. I just kind of wrote this in a rush. So, to the asshole who decided to spaz out and almost kill me, let's not ever fucking meet again.
This happened about three years ago, so I was 16 at the time. I remember it being a warm day, sometime in September, I think it was. I was off work that day and decided to go hang out with my best friend. We'll call her Abby. I had just gotten my license in the spring of that year, so I was pretty excited to be driving around town. I got to Abby's house and we were trying to figure out something to do. We decided that we didn't want to go out with friends and instead make dinner for Abby's mom and stepdad. So we get in the car and headed to Walmart to grab some ingredients for dinner and grab some cake mix on the way out. While we were there, we noticed there was a guy, maybe mid fifties, that we were constantly walking past over and over again in the store, but we didn't pay it much attention since it was pretty busy in there. We checked out and started heading over to my car when we noticed that that same guy packing his groceries and taking it to his truck. I remember heading over to Abby and saying something along the lines of, Oh, is that your new boyfriend? Or, why don't you go get his number? We both laughed, maybe a little too loud because it caught the dude's attention as we were walking by him. He looked back at us and we both knew we messed up by being loud. He turns around and tells us our hair is beautiful and asked us if we were sisters. We told him we were, thanked him for his compliment and told him to have a good day. Honestly, in our part of town, it's quite common for dudes to compliment whatever girls they see. So, we were used to it and just brushed it off. We went into the car. I obviously locked the doors and we start laughing about the guy, talking about how creepy his eyes looked. Now, looks like the guy watched Abby and I walk to my car, I'm guessing, because he ended up driving the opposite way of the exit to drive slowly behind my car. I saw his face looking at my car in the rear view, looked at Abby and went, holy shit, it's the same creep. We both broke out in laughter, making fun of him once again. He had already driven off by this point, so we do too. We get home, make food, have a good night, and sleep. Normal days go by, and I forget about the situation. Until one day at work. I'm running food from table to table, helping out the servers at my job, and I bring food to a table who looked particularly surprised to see my face. I didn't recognize the guy at first until I saw his eyes and realized who the hell I was talking to. I place the food down and ask if he needs anything and scurry off to the bathroom to tell Abby what just happened. Abby, the dude from Walmart last week is sitting in the restaurant right now and I just ran food to him. Hours go by, and he's still sitting at the bar, cranking back beers alone. I told my coworkers about the dude, and they were like, he's probably just lonely. My manager tells me to go home since it's slow, so I clock out and leave. As I'm walking to my car, I hear the restaurant doors swing open, and there he is, trailing behind me, telling me, to talk to him. I stop, turn around, and he says, So, does a pretty lady like you have a boyfriend? I tell him that I do and that my boyfriend works with me, which of course was a lie. He proceeds to get closer to the point where I can smell the alcohol on his breath. His eyes get big and he says, Would he mind if me and you became friends? At this time, I was totally creeped out and told the guy I was 16, hoping he'd back off after hearing my age. Unfortunately, I think all that did was make him even more interested. I tell him I need to go and that it was nice to meet him and walked away. I can still hear him murmuring under his breath. 
The guy was really drunk. He watches me get out into my car, and I drive away. I was totally freaked out by the guy and ended up telling Abby over the phone and telling my mom once I got home. She told me to keep my eyes open from now on because the guy was obviously interested in underage girls and doesn't care where he is when he finds a girl he likes. A week passes and I go to work again and there he is, sitting at the bar, throwing back beers yet again. I tell my manager that I am not running food to this particular area and tell her my background with the guy. She understands and sends me to work on the register. I see the guy waltz over to the bathroom and slams the door open so loud that the whole restaurant looks over and goes silent. He looks back at the silence he created and sees me once again. I was so over this guy. I didn't even care and just walked over to the kitchen to hide by the cooks. The guy heads back to the bar after his bathroom performance and orders food. Ten minutes passed by and the local police came in asking my manager to see last Saturday's camera footage. She walks into the office with the cops and all the staff is pretty confused. About 40 minutes later, the cops walk over to the bar and arrest the same old creep. I watched in glee as that sucker was getting put in handcuffs. I ran over to my manager and asked her what happened. Apparently, the guy was under investigation for spiking a young woman's drink at my restaurant, and the cameras caught him red-handed after the woman filed a police report the next morning. I haven't seen the guy since, except in my nightmares. Hopefully, he's still rotting in jail somewhere, getting some help from his weird fetishes. Anyway, ladies, always be on the lookout for each other. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true, creepy, let's not encounters. Before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes. Chrissy Elias, Anita V, Donna, Luz Crispin, Samantha Place, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Chrissy Elias, Denise S, Tina Mee, Tammy Slayton, Dova Khaleesi, Ida Smith, Amy Klimko, and Haunted. Thank each and every one of you for remaining a pillar for which this channel stands. I really deeply do appreciate you. To the other subscribers, thank you so much for your monthly subscriptions for this channel. It helps in more ways than I can put into words. To the other audience members listening, or the newbies, or everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really, really, really does help. Thank you. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.